yeah, you know what it is. It's another special episode of the Miller Experience Overtime. And we have a special guest. But before I introduce my guest today, I just want to thank you guys for liking and subscribing to the content. Right now, we're at a 595 subscribers. And we really appreciate it. So keep liking, keep sharing, keep supporting the content, guys. As you guys know, we got my man Craig. We got my boy Victor. And we got my boy Jason today. And also my special guest, Aaron Shelby, CEO of Shelby International. Since my boy Jason introduced me to this legend, I'm going to let him kick off the show. Let's go, Jay. What you got? Let me do this the right way. If you smell what Team Shelby is cooking, we are cooking up the biggest, the baddest two-day event you've ever seen in 2024. Day one starts out at Carolina Motorsports Park. If you think you can drive, you need to come out and prove it. That track is unforgiving. It's very demanding. 2.27 miles of unforgiving track. And if that doesn't tickle your fancy, day two. The House of Hook in Aiken, South Carolina. You can drag race, sh the car show, burnout contest, loudest exhaust, and we got the stereo competition going on, open to all makes and models, especially the Shelbys. My special guest here, and honestly, I am in awe. So if I mess up, it's because I've always, always wanted to meet the famous Mr. Carroll Shelby, but unfortunately, uh, he passed many, many years ago, and his grandson now is joining us an absolute iconic person from my understanding, from all the research, everyone that, that I have spoken to, uh, Mr. Aaron Shelby is absolutely the most down to earth guy in, in, in the world, in this kind of sports world. So without further ado, um, let me just highlight that this show, um, this event, this two day event that we're putting on, all money and all proceeds go to the Carol Shelby Foundation um, and that helps children that are in hospitals and their parents. Um, and at the end of the day, um, that is what's most important. The, the second reason we did the show is to bring all the Mustang clubs together to do something to show what we could do when we come together and quit all the banter of this club's better than that club and so forth, um, because we all are equal. But without further ado, let me introduce Mr. Aaron Shelby. Um, it's actual an honor for me to meet you on the screen. <laughs> Never met you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to him, um, and you guys can ask him questions, and he can introduce himself. Yeah, just real quick, thank you for having me on. I'm uh, really excited about this, uh, Jason. Really excited for the show that you got coming up. Sorry, I can't be there in person this year. Hopefully, uh, one of the future ones we'll be able to come out for. But looking forward to talking to y'all. Please feel free to ask away. Hey, well, well Aaron, tell, tell us a little something about yourself. For our audience that's not familiar with you, tell, let, tell everyone about you. So I think, obviously, as Jason was saying, I'm known more for being Carol's grandson and being involved in the Shelby companies today. But my uh, real job here in Dallas, Texas, is as a banker. So I'm a, a banker by day and Shelby by night, so to speak, and uh, have a lot of fun with that. I've got two boys. One's a sophomore at University of Oregon and... Second one is getting ready to graduate high school next week, and he's heading off to University of Georgia in the fall. So we, uh, in, in between banking and car stuff, I try and fit in the family as best as I can. Time out, Aaron. Time out. Time out. Time out. You say, you say Dallas? Dallas. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. Greg, go ahead. Put it on. Put it on, Greg. Uh -oh. We got one. <laughs> Oh, there look at that. Look at that. Oh, man. Nice. <laughs> hey, I, knew there was I, like you, I knew there was I something. Like I you, actually man. felt this. I felt something. I felt the connection there. It's it so strong. You know? <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good stuff. I like oh. it. Aaron, can you can you uh, tell these folks what uh, what the uh, foundation, the, the Carol Shelby Foundation, uh, what it's about, how it got started, and, and of course, and give us a lowdown on it. That would help. Sure. Out. So back in 1990, Carol had a heart transplant, and he saw a lot of families with children going through transplant care as well. And ultimately, Carol wound up with a kidney transplant in 1996 as well. So being a double transplant recipient, something that really was close to his heart. So we wanted, he started the foundation originally to help children going through heart transplants. That's morphed over time to broaden and we help children, or we help families with children going through any kind of transplant care now. And we work with the Children's Organ Transplant Association from Indianapolis. We also work with about five different pediatric transplant hospitals around the country and providing dollars 
to help the families get through that process. So there's a lot more to it than just going to the hospital and getting a transplant. There's a lot of physical therapy needed. There's a lot of medications needed. For a lot of times, families have to travel for that. You know, not every hospital offers transplants, and you have to usually go to one of the major urban centers, and you have a lot of you know, rural families that don't have the ability to disappear for three months and go stay with their kid at a hospital. And so we work with organizations that help support those families. And so that's really the uh, one leg of the foundation. The second leg of the foundation is auto tech education. We have the Carroll Shelby Automotive Technical School in East Texas. We help provide scholarship dollars for kids going through to get an auto tech education out of high school. Um, Carol was from East Texas. He really saw a need for that in, in the areas that he grew up in at the time when that relationship started. A lot of these kids were going to Walmart or just basic retail jobs. And he wanted them to know there's a path out there where you don't have to go to college to go earn good money. And there's such a need across the country for auto technicians today, whether it's dealerships or your corner auto shop, or a lot of these guys end up going, they may go to race teams. There's all kinds of different options out there. And it just opens up some, some avenues. So now, in addition to that school, we work with four other schools around the country that have auto tech programs, providing scholarship dollars for them as well. So that's the the core basics of the, the two legs of the foundation today. That's, that's, yeah. really great. Uh, that's really great. I, I love to um, hear about people's found foundations. It's amazing. I actually um, was part of the Crippled Children's Clinic. I was bow-legged for a while. So Shriners actually helped me um, mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Um, a question for you. Did you feel any pressure when you, um, I think you helped join Ford, uh, you helped solidify that relationship again. Um, did you feel any pressure of adding energy or new ideas when you brought, you uh, joined the board? No, not really. I think um, the two guys that are technically the co-CEOs of the company today, they're, they're older. They're not necessarily public people. They don't want to be out in public. They don't want to be tra traveling and representing the brand. And so it wasn't, they didn't come out and ask me to do that initially, but after several events and, and several meetings, it kind of just was a natural fit. For me to come in and then the Ford relationship through a lot of the events I went to, I started to meet the Ford representatives. They asked me to come up to Dearborn and meet with the teams up there. And so now I'm up there once a quarter. Uh, Gary Patterson, our president for Shelby American out of Las Vegas, he's there a couple times a month. But I come in once a quarter to help extend the relationship and the, the teams at Ford are great to work with. Um, what I really enjoyed when I came on initially in 2014-15, a lot of those folks had worked with Carol directly. And so it was great for me to hear their stories and what they enjoyed about working with Carol. And they really have a passion for the Shelby brand and what Shelby means and the, the Shelby Ford relationship means overall. So, you know, it's Ford's large. There's a lot of politics inside Ford and there's a lot of bureaucracy, but it's still, when you get down to it, there's a lot of passionate car people there. They want to succeed and they want not just Ford to succeed. They want to see Shelby succeed as well. Now, if any, anybody uh, in the audience or any of you guys don't understand, um, if you look at any, uh, any Shelby GT500, GT350, if you research that, that is who we're speaking to. That's the, the bloodline, the family. His grandfather started it all, and it was it blew up into something that I imagine he never even imagined in the beginning to as big as it is today. Uh, um, you can buy, I, I give you an example. I've got a 2014 Shelby GT500, about 30,000 miles on it. It is, in my opinion, one of the best cars Carroll Shelby ever designed. Um, he had a hand in the last, uh, uh, prior to his death, in the 2013-14, it was a 5.8 liter supercharged. And to me, it was just, it, it, it jumped out and said, I own this road. Um, it was 200 miles an hour out of the box. That car is absolutely hands down one of the best ever built, in my opinion. Now, I love all Shelbys, don't get me wrong. I love all Mustangs, <laughs> love all Fords. Um, but to put it into perspective, anytime that you guys hear about Shelby, then you can correlate it back to Aaron. And I believe it's, it, it is my belief, and along with many others, that Aaron's going to take Shelby into the, a new dimension um and a way different future um with better ideas than than even his grandfather had um a lot of people have put a lot of faith in him 
speaking to them, they were like, oh, I've met Ernie. He's really down to earth. Matter of fact, one guy's got his phone number and I don't even have it. I'm the director. I was <laughs> like, how do you have Aaron's phone number? I'm a director for, I work under this guy. He's like, no, I'm, I'm not kidding you. And I'm sure, Aaron, you got the, the, the text message uh, from William and he's and he screenshotted it and he sent it to me. And I'm like, there's no way. This is kind of a joke. <laughs> you have Aaron Shelby's cell phone number. That's not even right. <laughs> so, well, Jason, you. Chris, Jason yeah, go ahead. Sure. Long story short, you pretty much telling me his grandfather's the reason why I can't catch some of these guys when I'm trying to conduct the trap stuff. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 they the cars really are dialed back to to, to protect the vehicles, and and that's through Ford, that's through Shelby. So that way you get that longevity of motor. Well, there's guys like I don't know myself that modify just about everything. So you know, um, but anytime you do those mods and and you do those things, you actually depreciate the the vehicle, um, such as a Shelby. Because an original mint condition Shelby will bring high dollar money. There's a lot of people out there that buy them and they put them away in a garage. And in 20 years, they turn around and they sell them and they make four times what they paid for. it. Um, so you start diminishing when you when you modify it, unless you send it back to Shelby American where all the modifications are done. And when you do that, then it actually increases the value of the car. It's one of the very few cars out there that will actually increase in value and not decrease especially limited edition models. So let me ask you something, man. What makes you, I want you to kind of pop your collar a little bit on this and talk your stuff. <laughs> what makes y'all different than Ferrari and some of the other brands, these, these motor brands? So I think what brings Shelby back to being a little bit different, we talk about this at our events today. It's not just that I'm involved and you've got a family member still here. What Carol and the team at Shelby American did in the 1960s just hadn't been done before. It was a ragtag group of guys that were hot rodders in Southern California with really very little budget of any kind. And they went to Europe and they beat Ferrari and they beat Jaguar. And that story resonates a lot. It's the American dream to some extent. I tell everybody, Carol's the epitome of an American entrepreneur. And so while we're not big as Ferrari from a brand perspective worldwide, and we haven't, you know, Shelby didn't continue through the 70s and 80s and 90s. He joined back with Ford around 2004 that Shelby name still carries a lot of cachet with it. I've been to a number of events in Europe. Shelby means a lot over there. You know, South Africa is huge for Shelby Mustangs, as is Australia. And so it's just something when you're looking for something a little bit different, it's not necessarily maybe as flashy. People love the American V8. You know, that's what you look back at. And you, you talk to people about that. And Ferrari's done great V8s. And they've done, you know, six cylinders and 12 cylinders and 10s. But there's just something different about Shelby and it's a little more of a, it's all inclusive, I think is maybe the best word I can come up with. When you go to a Shelby event, it's everybody. There's a guy that the Shelby is the only car he has and he cherishes it. And there's guys that have 15 Shelby's and everybody gets together the same. You know, if you're a Ferrari owner, you're just in a little bit different sphere. And I don't think it's quite as the, the same environment. All right. So, so between Shelby and the foundation and everything, what do you love most about being a part of, of Shelby Corporation? I think my favorite part, and I tell people this a lot, it's the cars are great, but it's the people. It's going to events and visiting with people. And, and part of what I love about what I do today is particularly ones at New Carroll. I go to events all the time and you get stories of, well, I met Carroll in 1975 at this event and I saw him again and 1990 and he remembered who I was and that was just who Carol was and so to me it's forming those relationships the car events are a lot of fun and I enjoy going to the track but when you're out there and it's bringing the people together I go to some of the same events year in and year out and it's always like a family reunion when you get together you get to get caught up with people and their families and what have they done to their car recently and they all they're all very excited about that and so to me I love the cars and we've got a good collection here and, and you'll never get me to say I don't, but the people is what makes this really a great community. Okay. As far as uh, corporation, corporation. Your market share, how do you, how do you, um, how do you attract the younger generation? So I think it's been interesting. We've had a lot of discussions with Ford about that and we've had a lot of discussions internally while Carol was alive and up through, say, Jason's uh, GT500 2014, it was a 
I'll call it my generation, I'm 52 and older that kind of got into that. But what you saw change, I think, after Carol passed, when the GT350 first came out in 2015, that car was geared a little more towards a younger audience. It was marketed towards a younger audience. And when I go to shows today, I see a lot of younger folks, younger than me, that are big Shelby fans because of what they've seen in the last 10 years. I can't also not speak about the Ford versus Ferrari movie. That did a great amount of uh, goodwill for us in building a brand and telling people the genesis of the story that a lot of them didn't understand. They knew Shelby meant high performance and a fast car, and it was a partner with Ford, but they didn't understand why it, they partnered with Ford and where that came from back from the 60s. And so we see today a lot of younger generation and a lot more diverse client base than we've probably seen at any time in our life. But a lot of what we see with the younger guys, they want to go buy a new Shelby, but it's $100,000 and they can't afford it, but they're going to buy a 10-year-old Shelby and they're going to baby that thing and have a lot of fun with it. And they'll keep that until they buy one that's five years old and they buy one that's new at some point in time when they can afford it. That's the whole idea. It's it's one big community. We're not out to just sell new cars all the time. We want you to be part of the family and enjoy the events and the get togethers that we help organize. As a director, I can attest to what Aaron just said. You know, it is about the people. It really is. Um, I was once that young kid that couldn't afford that that 2014. And at 49 years old, I finally owned the car that I wanted when it came out. I was like, that's hard. That is fast. That is fast. And, and for me, it was breathtaking. Um, and, and Shelby's put out many, many different vehicles. Um, they're all absolutely amazing. And the one positive thing you'll never don't quote me, but I would say 99% of the time, you'll never lose money on a Shelby. Okay. If you take care of it and, and, and why, why wouldn't you, you know, at the end of the day, why wouldn't you take care of something so iconic? Why wouldn't you take care of something that costs you that much money? Right now I could turn around and sell my 14 for around $62,000. Um, Am I losing any money? Yeah, with not <laughs> But at the end of the day, you know, there's guys that have a garage kept a uh, uh, um, GT500 from 2014 that's got 120 miles on it, and they're selling for $323,000. And that is what uh, four, five, six times the window sticker was mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it all depends on your perspective, and Shelby offers it to everyone. So, everybody has the same opportunities. You know, everyone says, Oh, you got to be a millionaire to own a Shelby. No, no. I was 49 years old before I got my first Shelby. And it was like Aaron said, it was a used Shelby. And I, I'm, I'm very content with that. I'd love to have a new one. I've driven one of the new ones. Like there's wow. But be humble for what you be, be grateful for what you have, not what you don't have. And so I, I love, I love my car. You know, Craig, real quick, the other follow-up, I should be, I'd be remiss without mentioning it. Shelby's in the in the in any of the racing video games that you get. You know, that's really been another brand extension for us. And the ability for kids to go build out their Shelby's through whatever game it is, you know, that's another way that we hit that younger generation. Then when they see one on the road, you know, a lot of them, the first time they see it's a large show they go to. It's not because they're just not that prevalent out there, but they've been racing one for the last five years in their video games. So that's another way that we tap that youth market. So is that what you've been seeing in your customer base? It's, it's that car that, oh, man, I can't wait to get this car. I, I, I can't, can't afford it now, but, man, I just. It is, and it's amazing how many even, you know, if they desire to it, there's a lot of them that will buy a Mustang GT, which is a great, great platform. Um, and it's because they wanted to get the entry into the Mustang world and that's their first one. But ultimately, they want to buy that Shelby because that's the pinnacle of the brand. That's the pinnacle about the performance side of it and where they want to see. And, um, you know, we're happy to have anybody in the community. That's not a problem at all. You know, we, we welcome everybody to come to the shows and enjoy the track and whatnot. It's it's not about what car you have. It's coming in and being part of it and getting to know everybody else. Well, where do you um, actually looked up? Where do you I actually looked up a uh, 2021 Ford Mustang mm -hmm. uh, GT500 fastback? Is it? 
It is. It only had 9,900 miles on it <laughs> in mm -hmm. 2021. So this person pulls it out of the garage and let people see it and then <laughs> doesn't do much Man, else. And there's a lot of them like that. Long. You know, it's uh, you, you do. Carol always said you want they're they're built to be driven, and you do want to take them out. I mean, I'm a little guilty of that as well. I've got a 22 GT 500, and I probably have 3,000 miles on it. But it's you know, I take it out every other weekend or every couple weekends. I don't you know, it's I'm not driving it to work necessarily, but I do it. Take it to shows, and uh, I've had it on the track a couple of times, and you know, it's, it's an awesome car. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, you guys are really educating me about this because yeah. I'm not going to lie. Because you drive, you drive a Mopar in the highway patrol. I used to see Jason post Shelby all the time on social media. I thought that's just how he named his car, just Shelby. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Her name is Godzilla, okay? Her name is Godzilla. So when I run from the highway is, patrol, just say, I don't know that guy. <laughs> no, this is really gone in, in 60 seconds. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, yeah. Really, the movie oh, yeah. that put it on the map was um, uh, the Need for Speed. That was actually a Super Snake in that movie. Yeah. And oh, yeah. that car, wow! I mean, drop dead gorgeous. But that was a Super Snake. Okay, there's different levels of Shelby's as well. Um, and 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 Aaron, you can you're I'm you're more than welcome to please educate everybody on on the different levels of Shelby's. Well, sure, and I think you're right, Craig. The the Need for Speed was a great I'll call it modern movie, although it's what twenty plus years old now. Um, bringing that Shelby brand in while it was the you know the genesis of sort of a '67 GT500, I think they used in that movie. But the whole desirous aspect of it was being a Shelby. You know, that's what Nick Cage's character was after. So. That was great. You know, the Need for Speed movie used an actual Shelby in that. We worked, Shelby worked with the the film on that to do it. And that was a lot of fun. And, and kind of that newer generation, I think that was 2010, 11 vehicle, if I'm not mistaken. And then you get, you know, fast forward into Ford versus Ferrari later, which tells that story. So Shelby's pop up in these areas. You, um, I, I just, you never quite know, you know, where it's going to be. You know, the Cobras pop in every now and then as well. And Carol for decades was like, who wants a Cobra? You know, those are, there's, that's old technology. Why does anybody want one of those? Well, there's been many thousands more replicas of Cobras made than there ever were the originals today, but it's something about that iconic shape, having that V8 motor underneath you and the sound yeah. that it makes and just being a little free and, and wild. I think it, it's a fantasy for a lot of people. Where do you see, um, where do you see the, the, the Shelby brand going uh, within the next 10 years? Uh, because Ford currently is the only maker of a V8 model now. Um, mm -hmm. So where do you, where do you see Shelby at in, in, in you know, from well, here? Well, I think we continue, you know, obviously we'll continue our long-term partnership with Ford. The fact that they've committed to continue making the Mustang with a nice motor for the foreseeable future is important for us. But we do a lot of trucks today as well. And we started doing trucks almost 10 years ago. We've got four different Shelby packages on different Ford trucks. You know, we've got a Shelby Raptor package. We've got uh, a, a lowered truck package. So think of maybe the, when was it, the late 90s when the Ford Lightning trucks were out that were lowered fast trucks. Uh, we do a Shelby Super Snake truck in that mantra. And then we do regular lifted trucks as well. We actually just introduced um, recently a F-250. We call it the Shelby Super Baja. And the thing is massive. It is huge. Uh, but great off-road capability, super fast. You know, we do um, superchargers a lot of time on the truck. So that's that's how we've expanded quite a bit. I still believe also we have a lot of international opportunity to continue to build the brand that way. Um, when Ford took the Mustang International in 2015, it opened a lot of doors for us. We haven't, we were close to some success prior to COVID. We that kind of threw us back a little bit, but we're back and working on some of those programs again. Aaron, this is this is on, this is my final question. Jason took my my question, but yeah, I'm a question. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask you this. I'm in okay. law enforcement, so has yes. any law enforcement agency ever approached Shelby about having a Shelby patrol vehicle? Ooh, really? that's a good question. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, to my knowledge. I won't say somebody hasn't done it previous to my involvement, but to my knowledge, no. You know, Carol was a huge supporter of law enforcement, though, particularly he was in Southern California primarily. So he spent a lot of time with the folks there. But um, no, I think so. I mean, uh, you know, Ford, I know, makes their their I saw I think it's in North Carolina, but they've got some uh, Mustang. Uh, yeah, Mustang. So, 
you know, there's nothing that says we couldn't come in and do a few Shelby versions of that as well. <laughs> That'd be dope. Yeah. Can yeah. you make one and call it the Excalibur? Oh, well, we could probably do that. We could probably do that. We got Sportsman right there for you. Yeah, definitely. There's nothing wrong with that. That'd be a great name on the side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Colonel Colonel Wilson, go ahead, holler, Aaron, man. Aaron, get your number. Yes, I don't think we get oh, much good work stuff. out of you at that point. Yeah, if you, if you really, if you really want an iconic car, and there was very few made, it's the uh, Shelby 1000. It's another. 2014 model uh, vehicle, but it was called Shelby 1000 and 1000 for a reason. 1000 horsepower. Um, right out the bucket, man. You know, over 200 mile an hour top end speed. It, it is iconic to iconic. And if I could get my hands on one, uh, yeah. I, I would have one all day. Um, no, non emissions but, legal in California, however. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have emission testing in South Carolina, but I'm not. Hey, 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 we're we're good. In, we're good in Texas that. as well, so not a problem. Um, I tell you, I, I, it, to go back to that movie, I love when it said, "He's at sixty. He's at seventy. He's at. He's gone." <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Yeah. That's for sure. That was iconic, man. Yeah, man. But and, Aaron, you know, man, we, uh, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Jason. Go ahead. You know, and, and people don't know this, and so I do want to educate people because I, I've, I, I'm one to learn. Um, Shelby is in in the NADA book, okay? Um, so when you buy one, um, you're not coming out of the, out of pocket. You know, this absorbent amount of money, unlike some other brands. I'll leave it at that. that that are not in the NADA. So you, you will have to come out of pocket because it is nothing more than a GT with some added mods to it. And it, it's not in the NADA. And that's what makes buying a Shelby so, so unique is when you do go to trade it in, it's, you know, it is above that GT. It's above that Cobra. It's at the top and it generally brings the most money. So at the end of the day, it's really an investment, but then it's also a passion and a love like Aaron was talking about, you know, these kids, they come to our shows and they're like, oh my God, you have that. This car is gorgeous. And you're really drawn back because when you start owning the car and you have it, like I've had mine four years now, you're just like, eh, yeah, it's nice. You know, but when you get that, that young kid that's, you know, from 13, to about 17 years old, and they are just drooling, foaming at the mouth, kind of like I am having Aaron, you know, in front of me, like what, <laughs> you know, um, at the end of the day, that's what makes it all well worth it. Is, is is that that child going? Wow, this is yours. Can I sit in it? Sure, you can. Sure, you. It can. is. We, yeah, we, Jason, I've got a quick story about that too. If you got just a minute, so yes, we were in an event in Miami in March, the Moto Miami show, and they had uh, Saturday morning. There was a supercar show, and we had a Cobra replica there. It was a one of the Cobra race cars, and so. It, we we kind of had it front and center there, and then I was leading a parade of the supercars and the Cobra back to the showgrounds a couple miles away. And you had, you know, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. You had some exotic European stuff that didn't that didn't always come over here. Nissan GTRs. You had everything at the show. All of the teenagers were taking pictures with the Cobra. You know, all of, everybody's running around with their camera phones, doing videos here and there. They all wanted pictures with the Cobra. You know, that's a sixty-year-old vehicle today but it's still just, it brings out a different feeling than some of the modern technology does today. Yep. Uh, absolutely. You see a lot of uh, uh, those are the two seater vehicles uh, that he's re referencing that, that Carol originally built. They were two seaters um, and they are, they've always been a, a crowd pleaser. Yep. Craig, what were you, what were you asking? Craig. No, I was saying this is the first I've heard of the truck when you mentioned yeah. it. Yeah, and me wow. too. The first time I heard of truck wow. too. Yeah. You I have was, to I see this truck, man. Yeah. You, you got to take a look at them. There's, uh, we sell about, uh, across the full truck line, we sell about 2,500 of them a year. So uh, amongst all the models. This truck. Now, now just, wow. you know, make sure you break out the wallet and look inside nice and deep because <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love <laughs> them, man. I've ridden in them. Uh, they're, 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 they ride like Cadillacs, but when you want the power. You you plant it to the floor. This, that thing gone. Yep. Yeah, this thing is uh used at one hundred and seven five. 
they, they hold their value pretty well. And that's, yeah. you know, a lot of what we've been doing the last 10 years as well. We don't build a lot of cars. We keep the numbers fairly small and we do that for a reason. We don't want to oversupply. We want to make sure that there's just enough out there to satiate demand and that people are willing to wait till the next year if they, if they couldn't get one this year. So that's one of the reasons, you know, we're not, you know, Ferrari and Aston Martin, they've been pushing up towards eight, 10, 12,000 cars a year. You're never going to see us go to that realm. We're always going to be kind of that range where we are today, just a few thousand overall cars of, of various models. Wow. wow. Yeah, beautiful. That, that truck is beautiful, man. I was just yeah. looking at that picture. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, get a ride in one. Beautiful, man. Hey, uh, Ernest. Ride, you, er, uh, I tell everybody, hey, J- anytime you get inside Jason. of a Shelby, whether it's a car or hold a on, truck. Hold on, Jason. Hold on, hold on, Jason. What'd you say, Craig? Hey, I was saying Jason, Victor, and uh, – Excalibur, we all gonna get one and we just drive it each for a month. <laughs> you there you go. Turn. <laughs> to the, a time share. Man, this thing is beautiful. But I get yeah, one extra day because I thought of it. Yeah, there you go. I like it. You got, you got the right hat on your head. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. hey, but Aaron, Aaron, we really yes, appreciate sir. you coming on the show. You taking time out your busy schedule to come and educate us about Shelby. I learned a lot today. Yeah. So I'm basically gonna be I'm gonna be looking that, yeah. forward to you know every event you have and anything you got going on. You got a new fan to me, brother. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate it. And I really enjoyed the conversation today, guys. And hopefully I can get myself to South Carolina pretty soon. Yes, sir. Come on through, man. Yes, we love on. to have you. Yeah. All right, take care. All right, All right, brother. All right. You take care. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Yep. Man. Man, that uh, was that was that was nice. I love hey. it, man. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Jason. This sure. truck, man. Yeah, there's oh. nothing like it. Kevin, we're still alive. Now. We're still alive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I, hey, <laughs> hey, because you know, I plan on buying a truck next year. I'm looking at a Hummer, man. I don't know, man. I might. <laughs> <laughs> I might like might you said, you got that out, man. man. Yo, he said truck. I, that caught my attention too. When he yeah, said, "Yeah, I was like truck." Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's the most one of the trucks are one of the most universal vehicles because you can make yeah. them go fast and you can use them for for just about anything. You can pull yeah. stuff. Yeah. Hey. The, the new Shelby Baja, the Shelby Baja is unbelievable. It's an F two fifty, and that thing is nasty. Yeah. So if you're into the four wheel drive and the off roading, you run with it. If not, then Shelby put out a street truck yeah. that right hey. out the box pushes what almost eight hundred horsepower. Like that's crazy, and that's in a that's in a that's in a uh, crew cab. I mean, if you've never been in back of a uh, of an F one fifty or an F two fifty, that's an extra house back there. If you didn't know that, there's more room in the back than there is the front. So yeah, this is a one fifty. And yep. let me tell you, if you guys call me and say, "Craig, can you bring your truck to move a box?" Nah. <laughs> I ain't doing yeah. anything. Hey, that truck right there for work. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was straight stunt. Yeah, that kind of hey. I will, but you know what? I'll, 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 tell you I'll tell you from experience. Every time you get in a Shelby, I don't care if it's car or truck, it's a new experience every single time. I believe every it. single time. I believe Mine I believe still it. scares me to this day, and I'm only pushing 850 rear wheel horsepower. There are cars out there that are daily drivers are pushing 1,400 rear wheel horse. Um, like, it's crazy. I'm, it, it is just a new experience. And I, I was hoping Miller could hey. come out to the track on, on June 14th. Um, Greg, you're more than welcome. Yeah. I, you know, I'll get you guys passes to, to get in. Um, Where's it at again? Uh, Carolina yeah, Motorsports yeah. Park, day one, June 14th. Uh, it's like $10 per person. Oh, that no, that is Kershaw County, Carolina Motor Sports Park. Okay. Aiken okay. is the House of Hook, which is June fifteenth. Man, matter of fact, dude, man, I'm working that weekend. They might have us out there anyway, uh, doing traffic control. You said Friday, June fourteenth. Huh? What time is it? Friday weekend. Uh, Carolina, uh, the one at, on the fourteenth because it's a, a two day event. So on the fourteenth, the gates open at eight a.m. They close at five. And then the same thing applies for day two at the House of Hook in Aiken, South Carolina, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We're going to give out awards and, and giveaways and all kinds of stuff. Um, the sponsors have been overly generous um, with their contributions. A good example. Of, Aiken, right? 
If you if you pre-register for the show, anyone that pre-registers go, goes into a hat for a drawing. We're giving away five SET tuners. Those things are $400 a piece. Discount Tire has given us a set of wheels and tires to give away. It's non-car specific. So we, uh, oh, I've, I've tried. <laughs> Believe me, I've tried. Uh, because, Jason, you know, at the end of the day, the idea is to raise money for kids. Send us What's the information right? through, uh, via text or email so that I can sign up. So we can sign I'm because I plan on signing up. I, I'm off that day. Yeah. Okay. As what kind of car you got? Friday, Saturday, Sundays. What so kind of car like you got? Huh? What kind of car you got? Oh, I ain't got but a Toyota. Uh, what is it? Corolla. I'm. Not, I don't have fast cars anymore. Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. No, I didn't know. All right, guys. Ten minutes. Know. Next subject. Ten minutes. We, we got ten more minutes left. Next subject. Okay. Uh, we opened up. We opened. We opened this up to everyone. So whether you have a, a mobile. Jason, you got ten minutes, you. man. Next subject. <laughs> what next subject? <laughs> <laughs> what next, next subject? subject? <laughs> Do we, um, we have another subject besides that truck? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we're gonna be talking about the truck. I think we're good. Yeah, um, yeah, that truck, uh, man. Yeah, that truck yeah. got me uh, mesmerized right now. Yeah, man. yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, but, uh, you said right you said now. June fourteenth. So June, yeah. we stay on this June fourteenth in Kershaw and June fifteenth in Aiken. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just send us the information. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna let it let it go. No more about no other subjects tonight. But I know back yeah. on the twentieth. Can we talk about who we got on the twentieth, Ernest? So on the twentieth, we have Robin Evans from Chicks with Triggers coming on the show. Chicks with Triggers, that's right, coming on the show. She pretty much teaches ladies how to self defense with weapons, how to handle a gun, how to shoot a gun. She teaches them every, anything will come with guns. All nothing but females. So Chicks that's going to be very. Interesting. See, see, everyone's welcome. Everyone's yeah. welcome to Miller Experience over time. <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody welcome, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vic, she might I'm, be single too, I'm man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't so know. Like she's she got single. gun dog, so I know not to piss her off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ouch. I don't know. I yeah, see man. her. She, she was the AR right here. See? <laughs> <laughs> she was on the Breakfast hey, Club. The pink uh, AR. Yeah. She was on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. Uh, she's out. Of, she's located in the upstate here in South Carolina. So I mean, which one from very the Breakfast knowledgeable Club? young lady, huh? Which one from the Breakfast Club? Uh, Robin, no, not the, not the movie, The Breakfast Club. This oh. is a radio. Yeah, not the movie. Yeah, no, it's yeah. A radio show, The Breakfast Club. Yeah, not with uh, the dude from the Mighty Ducks. What's his name? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. What's his name? Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but but that that's on the twentieth. So that's on the twentieth. So, and I'm working on a Malcolm Hall for the twenty sixth. That's uh, that's what, what's Memorial Day coming up, right? Memorial is the twenty seventh, I believe. Yeah, but the twenty that's Sunday. I'm thinking around. Can you guys do two o'clock? That Sunday on that Sunday. Yeah, because he's out of the country. He's coming back uh, mm -hmm. on the twenty fifth. Uh, he's a comedian. Not I went not to high school. Me. Yeah, not for me. It. I have a graduation party. I got it that I'm working okay. with. So. Yeah, I got a graduation party at uh five o'clock that day. That's why I said two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, congratulations to all the high school graduates graduating out of high school. This is that time of year. So oh yeah, I forgot before we get oh, started. Graduate. I mean before we end it. Congratulations to my little sister, Alexis Miller, graduating South Carolina State and Kum Lati in political science. Congratulations, baby girl. She's going back to school. She want to be a lawyer. She want to get a law degree. So she's going back to school next year. So just praying for her. Hey, daddy's proud. I know Pop's looking down, smiling. Our three of his kids are going to be in law enforcement now. You got my brother in the federal. I'm in the state now. My 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 sister's going to be crooked and be a lawyer and just try to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you put them in, she gets them out, huh? <laughs> I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love your you. I love trailed, you. Your voice kind of trailed off on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust lawyers, man. I don't trust lawyers, man. Hey, you know where I stand on that. Yeah, yeah. Some of them cool, man. But hey, you, you, you some of them, boy. But if you ever need one. Yeah, yeah. If you need one, yeah. You, you, you want that one that you can't trust if you need one. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's for another show. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, definitely. don't forget to click hey, on like. We can on dedicate subscribe, a show. Man. We can dedicate a show to something like that. Yeah, yeah. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. But hey, guys, make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you guys for supporting. We gonna keep bringing guys content. Thank you, thank you. Like, subscribe, share everything, guys. See you in the next one. Peace. Peace. Jason, give it for Jason.